Welcome back to Backgammon University, Volume 3. And today we will be talking about the Double Threes Blitz. So if you like content like this, please, please, please press the like button. Like it a lot. Subscribe to the channel and I will see what I can do about making more content like this. So, the first thing we need to understand about the Double Threes Blitz is the reference position surrounding the cube. So we reach this position by five, four split or five, two split, double threes blitz and a fan. So the black team does not enter at all. We press on the double action and we will see it is a double and a take. And it is an 844 position. So it is worth a lot as the number gets larger closer to 1.0, it gets closer and closer to a double and a pass. But this position is still well within the double take range. Why? Well, there's not two on the roof. Uh, you know, when we attack with double threes, we're generally only attacking one checker. So there's still this checker here that's not on the roof that's sitting on the 24 point labeled as one here. Now, the strength of the double threes blitz is that it's not a true blitz at all. It is also a priming game. As we can see here, we have the five and the three made. Compare that to a double five blitz where we have the three and the one made, where we are relying on closing out the other team in order to really win this game. With the double threes blitz, we do not have to, and that is very visible in the evaluation of the positions having those two strong game plans to win versus just this one is really, really good. As we can see, this is worth, I believe 494, right? Way off from the 844 position. As they enter here, we can see that this is a double and a take at 555. And this is a double and a take at 616. After double threes fan though, 844. Uh, so what is our game plan after we double and they take? And one of the ways I like to look at this is by looking at all of the following roles and asking myself, well, should I hit, should I not hit? And I start looking at what numbers are most likely to hit. And in this position, it would be a five. Well, do my fives hit? And as I press the magic buttons here, we will see that six five does not attack on the ace point. It doesn't at all. It would actually be a sizable error to attack. It is much better to just play two down or tied for the best play is just down and split. One play wins more games. That would be covering the eight and splitting. The other play, two down, wins more gammon. So depending on the score, it will determine what your game plan should be. If you're trying to win a gammon to win the match, let's say you're four away, playing two down would be much better. And let's say you're just trying to win one point to win the entire match. Well, then winning more games, playing down and coming out would be a lot better. How about double fives? Are you trying to tell me double fives doesn't hit either? Well, let's press the magic buttons and let's see. And yeah, double fives doesn't hit either. We play two down and one all the way to the three, just trying to play more positional. Now, Michi has a rule. It is better to make a point than it is to hit loose. And that is very, very true for all of these positions that include a five here. We're making the eight and then doing something else like bringing another checker down or splitting our back checkers. We are not continuing to attack on the ace because our position is strong enough priming with the six, five, three. And with the addition of the eight, we just become that much stronger. So five, four should make the eight and split. Drum roll, yes. Second best play, just bringing another guy down. Five, three. I think we should just bring two down. 
13.8 and 13.10. And another checker at making the four point. And the second best play would be to split in 5-2. I think we should just bring two down as well. And we should see that is correct. So now we see what our doubling cube action should be from a double threes blitz position and how to follow up with our next rolls. Obviously with the 5-1, we're gonna make the eight and split since there is no better ace on the board. Good. Well, now we know our double threes reference position and we know how to follow up action after the double in a take. Now, one thing I also like to look at is what I should do as black if I don't fan because there have definitely been times where I have made mistakes entering. And when you're in a position like this, where you're already behind the eight ball, they rolled a fantastic number, and you really are behind it here, you don't wanna do anything extra to make the position worse for yourself. So it's important to know whether or not with a 4-1 you should enter here or play down or whether or not you should be fighting for an advanced anchor. And the computer likes entering high and fighting for the advanced anchor with bar 21, 24, 23. And one of the reasons for this is because they choose to fight for these advanced anchors early. When there's only eight checkers in the zone, there's less material to complete the closeout. So if they don't roll the perfecta 4-2 or double twos and they have to just hit you loose, well, then if you hit back, there's less material to continue the attack on you. And so it's easier to survive now than it would be later, right? So yes, with the 4-1, enter high, play 24-23. What about 6-1? I've messed this one up before too had to look at it in order to try to understand it. And yeah, it's better to enter with the ace and then down or out, down or out, down or out. It is better to hop out and fight for the advanced anchor while the game is still early. All of these positions, the 4-1 and the 6-1 I just showed you, are still no doubles from the other side after they're played. Let's look at the double action here. So, fight for your advanced anchor while the game is early, right? It's better to make a point than it is to hit loose. We know that we should be priming more than attacking once they fanned in this game. And we know that after the double threes, blitz followed by a fan, it is a double and a take. And that is episode three. If you want to see more content like this, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. And I will see what I can do about making some more. It is, what, December 31st? Say goodbye to 2020, hi to 2021, and have a good year. Later.